Hello and welcome back to the channel for everything you missed in Survivors of the Flux, my weekly roundup of easter eggs and callbacks and references to past episodes in the current series of Doctor Who. I would have got this out a bit sooner if it wasn't for the fact that I've been without power since Monday in the usual space where I record these videos, so that's why things have been a bit quiet on the channel these past few days. But thankfully, normal service has now resumed. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. Once again, the Doctor is surprised when the weeping angels surrounding her don't move when she blinks, and they speak to her using her own voice, just as they did to Jericho last week. Another reference to Village of the Angels comes later in the episode, when Farquhar name checks Madison, a deserted village in Devon. Not only this, but he confirms that the army who move in and turn the village into a locked encampment, as foreseen by Claire, was in fact Unit. This episode marks the second appearance of the Ood in the Whittaker slash Chibnall era, following their cameo in Revolution of the Daleks earlier this year. It's their most substantial role in the story since the Doctor's wife, with their appearances since in The Magician's Apprentice, Face the Raven, Hell Bent, and Minnesota's Death is the Only Answer and Pond Life being strictly limited to cameos. They also featured briefly in The Waters of Mars and The End of Time Parts 1 and 2, and were of course the main monster, for want of a better word, in The Impossible Planet slash The Satan Pit and Planet of the Ood. Something else which has appeared in countless episodes of the revived era is Different House. It was first used, very briefly, as part of the Torched Estate in Tooth and Claw, then as the Gardens of the Palace of Versailles in the same season's The Girl in the Fireplace. It next appeared as the hospital Donna stays at in Forest of the Dead. Additionally, one of the rooms featured as her children's bedroom. The house became Ashen Hill Manor for the Sarah Jane Adventures story The Eternity Trap, a story which also made use of the extensive grounds and gardens, which were also used for The Girl Who Waited, Deep Breath, Kablam, and the tortured story Something Borrowed. Various rooms also appeared in The Wedding of Riversong as Churchill's office, and Into the Dalek as Heaven. Here, both the house and grounds feature. Firstly, in the scene where the Grand Serpent, in his guise as Prentice, meets Farquhar, then for the 1967 scene set inside Unit HQ. In The Invasion, the second story to feature the Brigadier, and the first to feature Unit, the formation of Unit is implied to have been spurred on by the Great Intelligence's attack on the London Underground, as depicted in The Web of Fear. Survivors of the Flux adds a new piece to this puzzle, suggesting that plans were underway for a task force dealing with threats from beyond our understanding in 1958, as many as 25 years beforehand depending on your view on the unit dating conundrum. And this wasn't the only easter egg for fans of Unit. The 1967 Unit HQ has a no entry sign, which bears a striking resemblance to the one seen in The Three Doctors. A similar sign was seen in The Five Doctors. In both stories, Unit's base of operations was a country house, just as it is here. The Brigadier himself makes a very brief voice cameo when Farquhar and Prentice are on the stairwell. The line, Lethbridge Stewart here, I want to call to the RF, please, having been ripped directly from Terror of the Autons, Episode 4. Farquhar proceeds to refer to him as our new corporal. He also makes reference to Wotan's attempted invasion of Earth, using the so-called Post Office, or BT, Tower, as depicted in Doctor Who's very first Invasion of Earth story, The War Machines. And that's not all. In an astonishing feat of attention to detail, the paperwork in the unit lab alludes to the events of Remembrance of the Daleks, with a report on the Shoreditch incident, a sketch of the special weapons Dalek, and photos of Totters Lane, one of which is taken from the show's very first episode, An Unearthly Child. There's also a photo of the aforementioned post office tower, and a report concerning Holly Tree Lodge Orphanage, as seen in Torchwood, Children of Earth. You'd be forgiven for missing these details on screen, because they're only ever in the background. But fortunately for us, director Azhar Salim drew attention to them on Twitter. The Doctor's comments about having just left the planet Time, and then being called by Yaz to the TARDIS control room, confirm her hologram message to have been recorded during the events of Once Upon Time, specifically in the gap between the episode's final scenes, on Vinda's home planet, then in the TARDIS. 
Yaz's call and the Doctor's response to it are depicted at the start of that TARDIS scene, with the recording of the Doctor's message, presumably in some other room of the TARDIS, taking place just before, off screen. Additionally, I found their back and forth thing reminiscent of the similarly unconventional conversation between the Tenth Doctor and Sally Sparrow in Blink. Multiple references are made to the origins of Tecteun and the Division, as established in The Timeless Children. When asked whether she is in charge of the Division, Tecteun concedes that leadership currently falls to me. Tecteun was seen to have played a crucial role in recruiting the Doctor to the Division in one of the Matrix visions uncovered by the Master, who in turn gets name-checked when the Doctor asks, was what the Master told me true? Tactoon admits that she always knew deep down that the Doctor would never stop if he rediscovered what Division had done, as witnessed in multiple recent episodes following the seismic reveals of Fugitive of the Jadoon. She suggests that her eyes are the same even across the regenerations, an allusion to her first incarnation brought to life by Salem Baxter, and presumably other unseen incarnations too. Last but not least, Reference is made to the wormhole through which the Timeless Child was presumed to have fallen, and the monument underneath which she was found, with the flashbacks originally seen in The Timeless Children repeated here as a reminder for the viewer. And eagle-eared viewers will have noticed that the new Time Lord theme, originally established in this scene, is played once again when Tactian reveals her true identity. I'll be covering the music of Flux in more detail in future videos. The Doctor asserts that the Division's intervention in other peoples and events is a contravention of all Time Lord directives. The notion of non-intervention as a moral imperative first came up in The Aztecs, the show's third trip back in time, in which the first Doctor insists to Barbara that you can't rewrite history, not one line. This policy of non-intervention was retroactively written into Time Lord law in The War Games, in which the Doctor was put on trial for repeatedly breaking it. Neath Abbey, featured here as the Ravagers' base of operations, previously doubled as the Tower of London in The Beast Below and The Power of Three, as the Crypt of the Church of Tauvert in Vincent and the Doctor, and the Monastery Chapel in The Rebel Flesh slash The Almost People. When the Doctor asks Tektoonzood whether it's scared for its own kind because the universe it's compressing is full of Ood, she's attempting to appeal to the Ood's telepathic tendencies, Specifically, the Hive Mind, or Ood Brain, which connects all Ood, as established in Planet of the Ood. Tectoon transfers the Doctor's hidden memories into a Fobwatch, a Gallifreyan device for the protection and storage of memories and identities, as put by the Doctor, who used a similar device to temporarily turn human in human nature slash the family of blood. In the same season's Utopia, the Master was revealed to have used the same technique to disguise himself as Professor Yana. Kate Stewart makes her triumphant return in this story, having last appeared on screen in the Zygon Invasion slash the Zygon Inversion, and more recently in a 2020 promotional video for the immersive theatre show Time Fracture. The character made her debut in The Power of Three, which is also penned by Chris Chibnall, and subsequently appeared in The Day of the Doctor, Death in Heaven, The Magician's Apprentice, and the aforementioned Saigon 2 Parter, plus nine series and counting of Big Finish Unit audios. Unit itself was last seen in The Return of Doctor Mysterio, and name-checked in Resolution and Spyfall Part 1. When Kate warns the Grand Serpent that she shan't hesitate to call in a favour from someone you really don't want to argue with, she's presumably referring to the Twelfth Doctor, given that the scene was set in 2017, when he was stationed at St. Luke's University. Jonathan Watson, previously seen as Sontaran Commanders Skark and Ritzkor in War of the Sontarans, returns at the episode's end, this time as Stenk. His assertion that the forces of Sontar have revenge to exact could be read as a reference back to the events of that episode, in which the Sontarans were forced to retreat, and also, even further back, to Lynx's campaign in The Time Warrior, which, as War of the Sontarans affirms, initiated the Sontarans' vendetta against Earth. And that's everything, every easter egg or callback or reference that you might have missed in Survivors of the Flux, to the best of my knowledge, of course. If there is anything I've missed, any omissions, obvious or obscure, then please be sure to let me know in the comments section below. 
please do like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're new for more Doctor Who Flux related content. But until the next one, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye for now.